What's happening everybody? Thanks for tuning in to TNM Downrange today. So today we're out on the range. Beautiful, gorgeous day here in Indiana. And we have a awesome, awesome rifle here. We have the Browning semi-automatic 22. Let's check it out. So I have this loaded up with a few rounds here. Let's go ahead and just wake these steel targets up real quick and then we'll talk about it. And we're out. So. Let's talk about this rifle real quick. So uh, let me fix my glasses here. Um, first thing I want to say is if the audio kind of gets jacked up today, um, we do have a slight breathe right now, but it is such an awesome day that I want to take advantage of it because I haven't made a shooting video in a while. So I do apologize for that. But so we got the Browning SA-22 here or semi-automatic 22. Um, this rifle first got in production in 1914. Um, Browning sold the rights to make this rifle to Remington um, and FN of Belgium, which Remington made the model 21 or 24 and uh, 241. And in 1956, they started importing these rifles from Belgium. Did that all the way up until about 1974 when the factory moved to Japan. And so all the way up until now, these these rifles have been have been you know in production. And that alone ought to tell you how awesome and reliable this rifle is and so you know starting right off the bat let's just start off like we normally do right back here at the butt plate you got a steel butt plate that's screwed into the wood right here is your magazine tube so you you twist this and you pull it out right here I don't know if y'all can see that you have that on both sides and and that's what locks your magazine tube in so when you when you go to pull it out you twist it pull it out and, and then you load your shells right through here through the stock where this hole is and the, and the stock that's opening. Um, you just pull that magazine tube out and you start loading your shells and it holds 11. And then you go to push it back in, you twist it and it locks and then that's what holds your tube in. So moving on up the stock, like I said, right here is where you put your, or where you put your shells in. Um, right up here where you put your hand has got some checkering on both sides. Moving on up to the receiver. So the receiver on these rifles are pretty neat. I don't know if y'all can see um, the engraving on this or not, but this one right here is kind of like a base model. They got different grades of, of these rifles. I do not remember how many grades they have or anything like that. I mean, y'all can look that up online. But depending on the grade is depending on what kind of engravings you have along the receiver. So, you know, um, some of them had like really detailed engravings with gold inlays and all that stuff. And that was a higher grade. Um, so they had different graves. It is cut out right here for a scope up on top. Um, now, something else to notice is, I don't know if you all can see, but this receiver here has is solid. Or not solid, but it, it, is, it, is, it has no opening here. Um, and that is because this is a bottom inject. Here's the bolt and it injects the shells, the spent casings, and the gases from the bottom. So when you're shooting it, instead of it coming out the side, it comes straight down below, which is pretty neat. And also, the, the other reason why that's pretty cool is, say that I'm shooting like this and I have somebody standing right off to the right of me, those spent casings are not hitting them. Also, if you're left-handed and you're shooting like this, you know, if you, if you were shooting um, a right-handed gun and you're left-handed, those spent casings are gonna go across your face. This one would shoot straight down, so you really probably wouldn't have an issue with that. Trigger in this is pretty nice, you know, I've, I've felt a lot worse. It's actually got a pretty good trigger in this one. Um, and it's just got a cross bolt safety right here. It's got knurling on both sides. I don't know if you all can pick up on that. Sun's kind of glaring, but it does have um, knurling on the safety. 
Um, moving on up, so this one right here has the wheel sight. And what I mean by wheel sight is, is right here is the wheel. It's got little numbers on it. And you turn those numbers, or you turn that wheel to whichever number you want um, when you sight it in, and it moves this, this rear sight right here up or down. And this isn't the only sight they had. They had a couple different variations of this, but this gun right here in particular has the wheel sight. And that's all you do. You just turn that wheel and it moves this up or moves this down. And then that's how you get your elevation. Something else that's pretty cool about this rifle. So right down here, you have a takedown lever because this gun is a takedown model. So all you do is you flip that lever up, pull your bolt back, you twist it about a quarter of a turn and you pull it up. And the way this works, if you can see, is now I have part of the gun here with the receiver and the stock and I have the barrel in this hand. Um, you can, you know, put this down in the case, you can put this down in your backpack, say you're gonna go and you're gonna go squirrel hunting or you're going fishing, you just want a little gun to take, you know, for whatever reason, you're going camping or something, you can break it down, fit it in a nice compact area. Um, it don't take up a lot of room and it's not very heavy. Um, I don't know exactly how much this gun weighs. I mean, you, um, you could probably find that out online. It is a very lightweight, slim, well-balanced gun. Um, and the way that this works is, is if you look here, right here, I don't know if you'll be able to pick up on it again, but right here, uh, you can see it right there. There's no threads here, and then there's threads on the side. And, um, and what happens is, is so when you slick, stick this down in there, it slides in, and the threads are not lined up yet. There's no threads. But when you get it down in, in its spot, and you twist it, then it twists in the threads, and this tab is what keeps it from untwisting. So that's how those threads lock, um, lock together and keeps the barrel with the receiver. So moving on up, it's got some checkering up here, you know, so you, it's got not a whole lot of checkering, but like a little diamond type shape deal going on there. And this one right here is, is chambered and 22 long. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it, you know. So I don't know how many uh, shells I have here, but I'm going to try to do this on camera so you all can see. So as you can see, I got the tube out. Okay, and like I said, you just don't you don't have to put it like this and sh make the make the round go speeding down through there, but you just put it at a slight angle and you just drop the shell down in there, and it goes down. And you can hear it; it'll sh and then it will stop, and that's all you do. You just let it slightly fall down in there, um, and that's how you load it. And then when you get it all loaded here. Like I said, I really didn't pay attention to how many I grabbed. I think I got eight. Um, that's all I got. Then all you do is put your tube back down in, twist it about a quarter of a turn, and it locks it in. You know, you can lightly pull on it, make sure that it locks it in, and then you're ready to go. You just pull your bolt back, and you're ready. So let's shoot it. All right, we're gonna shoot a little more here. We got uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. We're gonna load it up with ten rounds, and we're going to uh, hopefully not miss any of them, and see what happens. Man, it is just something cool. Like I said, if you guys and gals ever get to get the chance to shoot one of these. I, probably the, the coolest thing for me is just to load the daggum thing. Um, if I don't drop all the bullets on the ground, just to load it back here in the stock is just something something pretty neat. Uh, just to load it in the stock down here is something pretty neat. I just think that that is that, that is cool. I don't, I don't know. I just uh, I get a kick out of it. So we got her loaded up here, and uh, let's shoot. Must not have had 10 in there, must have had nine. Or I think that's what I counted. Anyways, yeah, so that was a uh, pretty nice shooting. 
Some of you may wonder why I'm not shooting the other targets either, and it's because um, a couple of them, the little hinge part is broke, and um, I got I got some new things coming for that. I'm, I'm going to redo that. But, uh, yeah. Cool. This thing is an awesome rifle. It's very accurate. Uh, now, I haven't taken it out to, you know, like 100 yards or anything and shot it, but just from, you know, plinking around right through here, I mean, it, it's an awesome gun. You could definitely, definitely drop some squirrels from the trees if you wanted to. Um, so, you know, like, what, what, what would you use this rifle for? You know, I mean, if this was the only rifle you had, only gun you owned, you know, it's better than nothing. You could use it for self-defense, but, you know, um, you could, you definitely, it'd be a nice squirrel gun. You know, a nice little hunting gun. You could do it with that um, to teach your kids on. Uh, it'd be really awesome to teach your kids on. It's lightweight, it's not really big. You know, it's well balanced, like I said. You know, they would they would have a good time with that. You know, just taking out range and plinking, whatever. It is just an awesome, awesome little rifle. Uh, I mean, I, I just don't see how you could go wrong with it. And that's probably why, you know, they've, they've been around for so long. Um, today, we are shooting CCI mini mags right here. Uh, so yeah, that's all we have. Um, let's load it up one more time, maybe even two more times, and uh, we'll take some shots here, hit these steel targets, and just, you know, end it on a good note. And we're out. Man, I, I just don't see how it gets any better than that. I mean, you can pick those things off, you know, do, 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 do. Just an awesome rifle. So, uh, I don't know if I said it. I can't remember what I said in the beginning of the video. But this rifle was my grandpa's rifle, which my great-grandpa, his dad, bought for him. So it's been in our family for quite a long time. Um, I recently just got it passed down to me, and I'm super excited about it. And I wanted to come out and shoot it and, and you know, bring you all along and make a video about it. It's just an awesome, awesome rifle. I am, I am very happy to uh, add it to my collection. And, and you know what's funny about this rifle is, and not this one in particular, but a while back, it's been a few weeks, I was watching another YouTuber's video that I, uh, I am subscribed to, and, uh, which is Buffalo Outdoors. Now, I do not know him other than watching his YouTube videos. I never really talked to him other than in the comments, and he did not tell me to put his name out here. I'm just doing it, you know, just to be nice and do it. But he was talking about... Uh, I think it was a video over he how he likes you know just traditional bead sight on the end of his shotgun um, rather than you know some of the newer sights that are coming out on shotguns and he said something along the line of maybe he's old-fashioned um, and I commented on that video and said something along the lines you know there's nothing wrong with being old-fashioned or something like that and uh, it, it got me thinking you know I, I was raised what I like to call and what some people call old-fashioned and and I'm not going to go into detail about what I mean by that but um, one of the things is, it doesn't matter if it's just firearm or trucks or, you know, uh, being in the tractors or whatever, um, is being raised old-fashioned has also taught me to enjoy and like older things. And what I mean by that is older firearms. So, you know, nowadays we have all these ARs coming out and newer pistols and newer rifles and, and all these, you know, uh, attachments you can get for them, whether it's red dots or, or, or scopes or... Um, collapse, collapsible stocks or anything you know there I mean I could go on and on and on with this list and there is absolutely a hundred percent nothing wrong with any of those items or any of those guns or rifles or whatever I own quite a bit of that stuff uh, I enjoy it you know a hundred percent I like all of that but if you all have not got out and just shot one of these rifles like this or an older handgun older shotgun something like that and I'm not talking five years old. It is just something special. And, and I'm not saying that this shoots any better than, um, you know, a, a modern semi-automatic rifle or 22. I'm not saying that at all. It's just, you know, if you just take a step back and look at all of the, all of the time and effort that went into making these. I mean, as a person like me, I, I am not a machinist at all, but I have done minimal machine work. Um, I, I do weld, fabricate, and I am a diesel tech. And I know what it takes to put the time and the effort and in, into and to all the work into this. And to do it back then when, when the tools and all that stuff was not anything like it is today. Um, you know, I, I, I take, 
I take a step back and just think, you know, that's awesome. I take, uh, you know, I give them a lot of credit. And, and it's just something, it's something cool, you know. If, if you guys have not done that, you really ought to do it. If, if you get the chance to go out and, and get your hands on an older, um, an older gun, it is just cool. And, and, and like I told him, there's nothing wrong with being or liking old-fashioned things. There's just not. You know, whether it's this, whether it's this gun, um, older trucks or tractor or whatever. Just the other day, we were riding around in a 1970 um, camper special, and I liked riding in it just as much as I like riding in my new Ford here, um, or newer Ford. It's not brand new, but anyways, I'm gonna end the video there. I've, I've, uh, you know, jacked my jaws enough for today. So I hope you all enjoyed today's video. I hope you all enjoyed looking at this awesome, awesome rifle here, um, because. Quite frankly, I've enjoyed shooting it, and I've enjoyed uh, talking to you all about it. So, I'm going to end it here. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you click that, click that little button right down there um, and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you're feeling really generous, go ahead and give me a big old thumbs up and share this video. Share it to whoever. All of that right there is free. doesn't cost you a dime to do it. Um, and if you want to watch more videos of what I do, go ahead and click on one of those two right there because I also vlog, and we do a whole bunch of other things. So, yeah. Other than that, that's all I got for y'all. So have a good day, have a good night, weekend, whenever you watch this video, and I will see y'all next time.